How's it going? This is Fox back again for Sound Design Tutorials. Today I'm going to be doing a basic overview and a quick demonstration of Sonic Academy's ANA, Analog Noise Attack. It's a virtual analog, analog modeling synth. Um, it's a lot like Silence and uh, Yuhi Hive. So yeah, I'm going to do a quick, as I say, a quick overview, show you the front panel, talk through most of the knobs and buttons, give you a general layout of the architecture and the signal flow, and I'm going to go ahead and show you how to make a couple of sounds quick. So yeah, let's get down to it. So this is what you get. It is quite powerful in regards to the fact that you've got six oscillators. You've got three, what I'm calling the basic oscillators. At the top left here, you can choose between oscillator one, two, and three. Each one of these oscillators, you have exactly the same control in regards to the choice of the number of voices, one to 16 voices, one to, one to eight, sorry. You can choose your octave, plus or minus. Plus or minus three octaves each way. Semitones goes plus or minus 12. Plus or minus seven, sorry. And the fine tune is like a almost like a detune per oscillator before you detune any new voices, which is really neat. If you control click, it resets any of the controls back together. You've got a lot of choice in regards to waveforms. I say it's like uh, see it. Silent, it's like silent and then some because in silent you've only got what seven waveforms, I think. In this, you've got 40 odd. You've got all the basic ones you've got pulse, saw, pulse to saw, four different grades of pulse, another pulse there, saw, sine, subby saw, sync, pulse, triangle, and then these bell and comey distortion ones. I'm not going to go through and show you all of these. If you're going to buy it, you're going to look through them yourself, but it's just one of the distorted ones. <laughs> Gives you a nice raspy sound to start, but yeah, we'll click this back. Um, we'll init this again. Sorry, it's on a basic saw wave to start. As I say, each oscillator. Then, when you add more voices and detune it, you have the choice whether you want the new voices to re-trigger or through freely. Um, the freely moving sort of sound when they're unchecked is that massive sort of super saw sound that everybody craves for. When you check re when the re-trigger button is checked, it means they all start at the same point, so you get like a zapping effect. Adds a bit of pluck to the start of the sound. They all start at the same point and then they drift off. Um, when I'm making super saws or pads, I, I always uncheck that. You got the opportunity to keep it key track, which you're pretty much always going to want if you uncheck it. Every note you play is the same note. Why well, you wouldn't want to do that, I do not know. You've got um, the volume, as I say, detune. When you give it more than one voices, you've got the detune amount. Pretty close to a semitone. You've got the width then of those voices, like the stereo spread. You've got the detune shape, whether it pushes the vo voices closer together or further apart. It's like the uh, virus. They're pretty much all together when it's round to the right. Further you go towards the centre, it seems like uh, it's pushing the new voices further apart. Very easy to get a rich, thick sounding sound. Yeah, and then you've got the pan of the oscillator. Left, right. Everything is modulatable, we'll get to that later on. This filter out, I'm not too sure what that does if I'm honest. When it's all the way to the left, it's going directly into the filter. Sort of a mix that goes into the filter, I think, if we have a dead center. It's like a parallel signal, half going into the filter and half going out. That's a neat trick. Nice little thing I didn't realise we had. So as I say, that's it for the basic virtual analogue 
oscillators, which it says here. So all your different waveforms. You've got three identical, so you can easily build up some massive stack sounds. You could have three oscillators, all with eight voices a unison, detuned, pitched an octave down, oscillator three, eight voices, detuned again. Pitch that one two octaves down, you're going to have a big thick sound. As you can see, real easy to get some huge sounds. Clips a lot though, that's one thing I've found. The more voices you stack, there's no internal limiter on it, so you have to be really careful with the volume. Lovely rich sound. Then it goes to oscillators four and five. All the oscillators are stacked to across the top. Oscillator four and five, you've got a totally different selection of uh, sounds, if you like. Big stem, let's... Um, there's no mute buttons for the oscillators, so if you don't want to hear them, you just keep the uh, volume on zero. So we'll mute oscillator one, two, and three so you can hear just oscillator four at the minute. Local. It's a noise generator, it says there, but there's some other things that sound. Chime belt. Crispy noise. Guitar loop. You could imagine if that's plucky, you're going to use those for some real gritty bass sounds. As I say, it says that these are noise oscillators, but some of these are really cool. Mega chord. This one doesn't come key tracked as standard. Some really nice sounds to act as beds for pads and whatnot. Sky bells. Really nice, as I say, to layer underneath other things to have them sort of rumbling beneath pads and other sounds. Really cool. Um, a little bit limited uh, in regards to the control on these. There's no um, voice stacking. So you've got no detune, detune shape or width knobs. You've just got the volume. Start time for the sample. It's not going to make much difference for most of these because they are noisy sort of sounds. Pan and then the filter out again, the mix to the master filter. Same thing with the retrig. So that is us covers oscillator four and five really quickly. Not rushing, but it's really still quite basic. You got the basic pink pink noise sound sources. Pink noise. So yeah, oscillator four and five covers and noise generators. We'll pull the volume down for that again. Oscillator six is an attack sound. These are like little clicks and punches that you're gonna have at the start sounds if you're doing plucks or making kicks yourself or even basses there's a real nice one is this piano one why aren't we hearing that perhaps you are Pass. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. Maybe you can just hear it now. I've pitched it up a bit. Some of the little clicks. You got tom sounds. Ooh, very very slight, but all add. All add just a tiny bit of punch to the start of sounds. So let's go back over to oscillator one now, we'll give that some volume. Give it just one voice of unison for now. Real basic saw wave. We'll go to the filter section now. Real straightforward again, you've got the choice of two, you've got two filters. The signal always flows into both filters. If you don't want anything on filter two, you have it on none. So in effect, you're just using one filter. But as far as I'm aware, the signal always flows through both filters. Um, you can have the choice of parallel filters, which means the filters run alongside each other. The same amount of audio signal comes from the oscillators into both filters and then gets mixed again on the way out. Or you can have series, uh, 
which means they run in succession. So the signal goes into filter one and then into filter two. It's really neat if you have two totally different types of filters. You can just cut the top off a cut the top off a sound with a low pass filter and then have something like a comb filter coming out when it's in series. Series mode doesn't seem to be doing what I'm doing as well. As I say, this is my first time with a synth, but that should be flowing from filter one into filter two, which it isn't. Nothing has effect now. Check over that later. I, once I've had a chance to review this synth properly and read the manual, I'll put, put a link in the description as to what what this cut-off knob dub and how the does and how the series and parallel works. So yeah, loads of different filters to choose from. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's twenty odd filters. An all-pass filter is a neat one. Because from a low pass to a high pass, you got everything low pass will drive. You have no idea what this cut off one slash two knob does. Seems like a master filter, but. Nothing seems to have effect when it's open. Very strange. So yeah, basic filter section, nothing too stressful. After the filters, it goes into the effects, obviously. Um, we'll talk about the effects and then we'll go over the modulation. We've got a phaser. You were to turn them on, you click on these little buttons at the bottom here. Use your controls, the amount of poles. It goes up to a 32 pole phaser, which is lots of different stages. Frequency is where it pinpoints it. Spread. It does what you would imagine. Feedback's bipolar. Dead center is uh, zero. You get negative feedback. Positive feedback. Depth of the phase. The rate goes really quite quick. And then a dry wet knob. Real straightforward. As I say, these effects really are quite basic, but the quality of them I've found, even with using it for a little amount of time, is really quite high. Chorus. Bearing in mind, I'm just using one voice of one saw wave at the minute. That's all you're hearing. With the chorus turned on. Can make it sound quite wide. Again, the choice of poles for the chorus. This is like the number of delayed signals. Get quite a rich, thick sounding sound. As I said, with just one voice of one saw wave. Uh, the distortion is real basic. I'm not really going to go into that. You've got a crush and an amp sim. Crush is a bit crusher. It's fully wet. Use it to get some 8-bit sounds, some old school sounds. If you got an amp sim, if you turn off the amp sim cabinet on,
So that's the distortion. You've got a basic compressor. I won't even bother going into that. The delay is really, really good, I found. Let's make it a bit plucky. So you can hear it ring off. Um, time left and right, as you would imagine. For some reason, it starts on 1 over 8D, which is a, it's like a triplet or something like that. What would you want to start on a denomination like that? I do not know. So yeah, 1 over 4, 1 over 8, 1 over 4, 1 over 8, standard trance sort of delay. Feedback amount, as you would imagine. Sounds like it's an infinite feedback, which I really do like. If you turn the feedback on full, it sounds like it's going to keep going forever. Um, dry wet again. You've got a low pass filter so you can uh, attenuate the signal going into the delay. You've got pan left or right for the timed delays as well to give it that sort of ping pong effect. Reverb, real good quality as well. You've got a low pass filter again, so you can low pass the signal going in. Damping it does what it says. It's like I was always told when I was learning, it's like putting carpet on the walls of the room. It dampens the signal. Room size. Decay, how long the tail lasts for. And a high pass filter. Reverb, dry on. You can turn the dry off altogether and have it solely wet signal going into it. That's a neat trick. So yeah, I ain't going to go on forever about the effects. Uh, they're pretty basic, as I say. Good quality though, from what I can, what I've learned so far. Where this really shines compared to silent for another basic simps like this. Bearing in mind, this is only 49.99 English pounds, which is very, very, very cheap. It puts it in the region of nothing. It's pretty much cheaper than any other synth out there that's got this capability. So well worth a look just for that. So yeah, modulation, we've got a lot of it. You've got a dedicated filter envelope um, with the filter. I didn't go over the filter controls. Sorry, I'll just do that quick. You've got a cutoff knob for each filter. Resonance, which is the peak at the cutoff point. Envelope, destination amount, positive and negative. Key tracking for the filter, cutoff and velocity sensitivity for both filters. So um, envelope amount, for to be able to use the filter envelope, you need to dial in a destination amount. If we close the filter up, dial the envelope amount positive. This envelope is now controlling this cutoff frequency positive the amount in the envelope box if we do a nice snappy filter envelope typical trancey pluck sort of sound we give it some more voices and check the re-trigger give it a bit of delay This thing really is good for trance music. Um, you'll tell that if you look on their website. Most of the sound packs uh, that they've had come out, Synthesis has made, are trance orientated. Um, everything about it screams trance to me. The stacking of the voices, the unison, plucky filter envelope, dedicated filter envelope. You can choose the envelope curve. For the envelope, you've got velocity sensitivity and the amount of envelope here. It's like a mix for the envelope. Real nice snappy envelopes, real good to work with. Um, that's the filter envelope. You've got a main amp envelope, as you would imagine. You've got a separate mod envelope. You can set the destination here, of which there are hundreds. Again, this is how it stands out from Silent, another real basic sort of analog modeling virtual synths, is that you can modulate pretty much everything. You can modulate a load of different effects parameters, 
pretty much all of the effects parameters that you're going to want to modulate, which for me is huge. I'm a massive fan of being able to modulate effects parameters. Why you can't do it in silent, considering it's been out seven years, is beyond me. I'm sure it wouldn't take much for them to add some more destinations. Anyway, yeah, you got everything. All the oscillator things that you want. Oscillator one, volume, pitch, pan, and a filter out. You can't modulate a detune, but you don't really need to do that. In the virus, you can, but the virus is £2,000. This is 60 quid, 50 quid. So, yeah, all the mod destinations, all your filter destinations. You can also modulate modulators, which is handy. You can do the LFO rate and the depth for both the LFOs when we get there. You can modulate envelope amounts. You can modulate the... Uh, multi-stage envelope amount and multi-stage envelope rate because it can sync to a clock it's very very clever filter one two cut off resonance pretty much anything you're going to want to modulate you can do it so yeah and then you've got other mod mod destinations as well once you've set these three envelopes up and the lfos up if the destinations are enough you can then choose what you've got here you can choose lfo one or two again and envelope three envelope three where's that this is envelope three it's labeled mod envelope so yeah you can choose your modulation source in the top and then choose further destinations and the amount at the bottom real handy it's exactly the same in silent so you've got one, two, three envelopes, two LFOs, all these extra modulation slots. I'm going to go through some of these modulations in a bit when I make a, a couple of patches. Um, polyphony, you've got the uh, choice of polyphony here. It is polyphonic portamento, which is really nice, which means it glides per note. You can choose the pitch bend range of the pitch bend knob. You can choose between legato and slide for the portamento. Chord hold. It just goes on what you can do. If you press learn, press in a chord, you've got up to five steps to learn. Pressing one key now, once you've punched in those notes, it remembers the notes that you've played and plays the chord by pressing one note. Oscillator mute. So yeah, chord latch, not some odd use personally. If I'm playing chords, I'm going to play chords. This is the real star of the show for me, this G envelope. I don't know what it stands for, whether it's a generic envelope or anything like that. Um, for anybody else in the sound design trade, it's a multi-stage envelope. You can click as many different points in as you want. I haven't tried to click unlimited amounts, but I can imagine you can do as many as you want. Draw any shape of envelope you want. To me, this is huge. Serum has it. Massive sort of has it with a performer. Synthmaster def definitely has it. Um, any of the synths that have it, I can think off the top of my head. Oh, Absinthe 5 has multi-stage envelopes. They are so versatile and so powerful just for the shape, just for the fact that also you can sync this to the clock. So yeah, say I wanted to... It's almost you can almost use it as another LFO. You can draw in triangle a double time triangle shape. So it's pretty much a triangle LFO. Sync it to the clock. Choose a rate of one over four. Set it to filter one cut off. Dial the destination amount negative. Let's do away with the filter modulation. Give 
it's a sustain on the amp envelope. <laughs> Filter one cut off, that's why it's not working. So now you've just created another LFO. <laughs> and of course you can draw any shape you want. Shame you can't um, modulate it on the fly by clicking these two X, Y or anything like that. Um, you're going to be using that to make gated pads, I personally will. Let's crank the speed up. If you do a triple one, that's your classic trance gate. So yeah, multi-stage envelopes. Um, you can draw in side chain shapes as well, which I'm going to do in a minute when I make this patch. And you can side chain the reverb amount, which I'm a massive fan of. So yeah, uh, let's initialize this. I'm going to draw some basic chords in quick. And I mean basic, it's just going to be an A. It's easiest to remember. Stretch this out. Join it. Sorry, I should change scenes really so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just going to draw some basic chords in, as I said. simple basic chord progression so yeah let's see what we can do with it then we're gonna stack some voices up detune them uncheck the retreat <laughs> Choose this Mega Saw 4 as a background sort of sound. Check it to retrig so you get a bit of punch with it. We'll key track it as well. Bring us a later one back in. Adds a bit of white noise, hiss beyond the sound. Oscillator 3. We'll choose one of these P saws. Let's crank the voices again. Give it a bit of filter envelope just to open the sound up. Let's use a basic, I didn't go over the LFOs, but I'm sure everybody knows how an LFO works. You've got some 
basic LFO shapes, sine bow polar, here's your destination amount, you've got rate, depth and phase. So target, we are going to use this to modulate filter one cut off, negative. <laughs> a bit more movement. We'll try some of this lovely chorus that we played with earlier. Delay on. reverb is now on so yeah I'm going to use this uh, multi-stage envelope now I'm going to create a side chain short of shape like the ones that you get inside serum real straightforward probably don't have to go that severe I'm going to set this target to the reverb wet and then I'm going to pull the reverb wet down sync it to the clock of 1 over 4 I'm also going to sync it to G envelope I'm going to get it to do the delay wet I'm going to turn the delay wet down so you get that So now it's pulsing the delay uh, wet signal. It's pulsing the. It's almost like the mix for the delay and the mix for the reverb. We're also going to do it for the chorus as well. G envelope. There is no chorus. You can't modulate anything on the chorus. That's a shame. I'll turn the chorus off then. <laughs> I suppose we could use it to modulate the overall volume. Really nice pulsing sound there. Um, it's like it's like its own side chain tool when you do this. Let's quickly drop in a kick in there. Let's quickly quickly just drag any old kick. Uh, vengeance trance kick. As I say, this is it's almost like having your own side chain. Make it more plucky just by pulling the amp sustain down. Or by adding some filter envelope, closing the filter off.
boy sneaking in on his push bike. Sorry about that. <laughs> Very easy to get some real pumping sounds. Um, if we uh, do away with the destination for that, that, and that. And we'd make that little trance gatey sort of uh, shape that we did earlier. It's like three saw waves and then a drop. Try and keep them to the grid if you can. It's going to be more fluent. Do it to the uh, filter one cut off as well. Add a bit of phaser. Phases it changes the starting point. Yeah, all in all, multi-stage envelope, this G envelope, sells it for me. If uh, Yuhi Hive weren't coming out imminently within the next couple of days, I would use this rather than Silent. Yeah. Big sounds, massive, massive sounds. You're going to be able to get some real gritty basses out of these data and these dis digital. Bit of distortion on there as well, that's going to crack that up pretty good. Bit of delay. Yeah, very, very versatile synth. I ain't going to mess around anymore. I've been waffling along for long enough. Um, 
I'll do a link in the description to Sonic Academy's website where you can buy this. 50 quid, no brainer. Just get it. It's another tool to your arsenal, even if you just end up using it just for this the capability of being able to side chain the reverb. It's a real, real neat trick. If you want to do it inside a door, it can be a bit stressful. You have to send uh, the you have to send it to a reverb channel on a on a send channel and then side chain the side channel. You can do it all inside here with this multi stage envelope. I've only just scratched on the surface of what you can do with these envelopes that you can draw yourself. As I say, they are crazy. It makes a simp for me. There you have it. Analog noise attack. Uh, from Sonic Academy. Hope you enjoyed this. Please subscribe. Um, make sure you check out my uh, other tutorials and videos on my channel. And uh, just quick reminder that my Serum Sound Pack EDM Essentials is out now to buy. Go get it. You'll love it. Thanks a lot. Cheers.